at the 2023 PDGA Masters Disc Golf World Championships in Flagstaff, Arizona. Friday is moving day. Grant Zellner and Philo Brathwaite with back nine coverage of round number four in the MP40 division. We're at Thorpe Park and things are tight at the top. Yes, sir, Grant. Thanks for having me back with you, bud. It's been a fun show so far, and these competitors have been battling it out for days. Joe Revere, Kale LaVisca, one stroke separates the two. Josh Anton, Dave Felberg, one stroke separates those two. And there are a host of other players not far behind. Canada's Martin Hendel, Josh Johnson, Matthew Blakely, very close to a Tim Selinski championship of his own. Here we are, hole 10, Grant. Much like the opening nine here at Thorpe Park, we begin with a challenge. This one, a 427 foot par three plane is one of the more difficult holes on the layout. You can see why all those trees between tee and basket, so hard to be clean. That tree is the one to beat. Dave Milberg takes a nice kick. Wow. Do a, do a good job of flaring out, hydering towards the basket. Could have been worse. Beer, maybe a little under committed there, just kind of chucking that one straight into the ground. Never gave it a chance to catch a catch a glide. Mmm, Anson, a deflection off to the left. Army golfing. <laughs> and and Kayla Visca. Nope. Nobody clean here at hole ten. Josh trying to do his best to get up and down and scrape up a par. Still some work left. Kayla Visca's second. That took forever to come back on screen and online for Kayla Visca, but back onto the center of the hole. Look for par. Dave Feldberg, beautiful little turnover up shot. Absolutely, slides just in front of Kayla Visca. Little work there for a par. Joe Revere bumps and grinds a little bit, pin high left. Here's that par look for Josh Anton. Gave it a good effort, comes up empty. Oh. Joe Revere, just barely over the rim of the bucket. Now Kale through the whole routine. Three pars and a bogey here at hole 10 for this card. Heading on over to hole number 11. Just 272 feet, this is a narrow, slightly downhill par three. Imagine these guys can get there with putter mid-range at most. Maybe a little sidearm action if they have it in the bag. The play does look centered down the fairway with a putter. Love it. Absolutely, what a great adjustment for Dave Felberg from the last time we've seen these guys play these holes. Beautiful, once again there, Joe Revere looking to get some ground play. Oh, that was a great angle. Just kind of got robbed by that rock. A little more height for Kayla Visco. Solid on the speed control there from Kayla Visco. Little work putting back up the hill. There you go. Didn't look like a bad shot for a sidearm. Things open up on the right side. Well done there from Josh Anton to get pin high. Revere will have to settle for a par. These two are going back and forth. Kayla Visca, Joe Revere. Josh Anton, nice recovery once again. Picking up a bogey on the previous. Covering it up with a solid birdie here. Hole number 11. Mm-hmm. 
No doubt about that. Five steps off the bucket for Kayla Visca. You can pretty much count that every time. Knotted up once again at the top, Joe Revere and Kale LaVisca not able to gap the field. Yeah, yeah, you don't really see anybody really just running away with this tournament. A couple of strokes here and there, but five, six, seven, eight, I don't know, with these conditions in the woods, too many variables. The 12th is playing as one of the easier holes on the course, 402 feet uphill as a par four. There you go. Anything in the middle is okay. Yeah, he's retreating a few feet, but that's not going to hurt him. Beautiful shot there from Kayla LaVisca. Opportunity to slide one in for Eagle. Philo, I've got to ask you, when you're playing a hole like this and you know your disc is probably going to get beat up coming to the ground, does that ever affect your decision? Depends on how much I like that disc, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure these guys are using a bunch of alternative discs in their bag right now, and they're anticipating these things are going to get chewed up out here in Flagstaff. So I highly doubt these guys are throwing their pearls right now, those discs that they've toned in and tuned in over the years. I'm sure there's a maybe a couple of discs they'll lean on every once in a while, but I highly doubt they're using things that they'd want to use back at more sea level type, you know, type environments. Maybe the putters, you know, maybe the putters don't change too much, but I'm sure the drivers in the mid-range all got, you know, cycled in and out, you know, maybe found some old stuff in the trunk, get some of that more beat-up plastic that just catches that nice glide up here in elevation. If you want to practice up shots like these, go to your local mall and try to throw up the escalator. <laughs> There you go, David Bellberg. Nice little swing and pop there. Gets him to five under on the round. He's trying to get himself back into this conversation. Quietly. Challenging footing just to get to your disc here at the 12th. A little extra workout too. That pressure on the legs up and down these hills. That'll do. Star frame for the card. Imagine, your favorite disc is unreachable. How will you recover? Have no fear. Introducing the arm. Augmented reaching mechanism. Providing players with over 21 feet of reach, Users will face no challenge retrieving trap discs in nearly any scenario. For further flexibility, the arm comes with two grabbing devices, the pivotable rectangle and the double claw. Go to your local retailer and ask for the arm today. there and then you've got these two construction looking fences kind of halfway down the fairway that can easily make things interesting coming down the hill kind of plan to stay over and definitely fairway central the whole way if you can Ooh, this is moving right in a hurry for Felberg. catches a tree he's gonna have to go up and over one fence to get back towards the green area Kayla Visca looking to hyzer flip wow Look at this. Off the band for Kayla Visca. Are you serious right now? What a shot. Spectacular. Josh Anton looking to follow that vapor trail. Get sucked into the vortex down there at the green level. Solid play there for Josh Anton. Very attackable birdie putt. Joe Revere, can he match? Beautiful. Look at that disc bounce up and down. Manages to get far enough for a decent look at the basket. Absolutely. What about that shot from Kale, man? That was oh. insane. I thought that was going home. About two clicks off the basket. That was looking so pure. Elberg nearly throws one in for a birdie from halfway up the fairway. Josh Anton. Big birdie putt here. Oh. 
Hard unable breaking. to connect with those 38 footers. Usually good for a few of those per round. Joe Revere trying to keep pace with Kale LaVisca once again. Good commitment out the hand that looks so much better. Into the chains, out the hand, and into the chains it goes. All right. Wow. Talk about matching a big putt. Kale LaVisca keeping things knotted up with Joe Revere. Would have been a shame to not pay off that birdie after that drive. No doubt. That even ran off a little further than it looked like from that other angle. I thought he was right there, 15 feet away. That was a little more of a tester than he may have liked. David Felberg, solid par save. Unfortunate par scrape up there from Josh Anton after grabbing a whole lot of chains. With that, the twosome at the top extends their lead over their competitors. We go to the 14th, 258 feet to par three. Yeah, this hole doesn't really offer you a lot of other options. Really straight up the middle, little hyzer flip seems to be the play everybody wants. Job done there for Kale. Now Joe to answer. That'll work. Dave Feldberg trying to keep pace. Lovely shot there from Felberg. And Anton. Yeah, sounds like he caught something late there. Yes, he did. Josh Anton still out in the fairway from the looks of things. And to try to throw this one in and comes up just shy. Beautiful line was tracking. Just runs out of steam. Felberg well within circle one for birdie. Dave does all he can do, knowing that the two in front of him are even closer for their birdie looks. Yeah, Felberg's doing all he can this round. Those guys did start off a little slower than Felberg did. He kind of found his rhythm a little earlier, but since then, Joe and Kale have kind of found that rhythm, found their pace. These two are going back and forth. It's a lot of fun to watch. The 15th is playing as the third easiest hole in round number four. It's a 311 foot par three. Pretty straightforward here. Nothing too crazy these guys got to deal with. Straight up disc golf. Get it! Oh Ooh, my is God! Is that more metal there for Kale of Disco? Looked like he basket. nose grind off the rim of the basket. Wow. Reminds me of skateboarding. Uh, all right, all right, that's in the neighborhood. Not parked up, parked up, but definitely a putt. Dave Felberg trying to hang in there and keep things interesting. Ooh, another near bounce into the chains there. Felberg, beautiful shot. Josh Anton trying to keep pace with Felberg. Again. Everybody's giving this a little bit of a bid, a little ground play, trying to hop into the chains. So uncharacteristic for Josh Anton. You don't typically see this many of his putts on the ground. He's usually so solid from that circle's edge, 35, 38 foot range. Uncharacteristic day for Mr. Anton. Okay, he'll force to straddle out here. There we go, figured it out and got it home. Feldy gives it its full attention. Casual swing and pop. Collect birdie and Joe Revere last to act. For birdie anyway. Nice 
Nice. 35 apiece. Kayla Visca, Joe Revere. Why this golf? It's the people. It's fun. It's the lucky shots. It's the feeling. So come out. Grab a disc or two and let it fly with Lone Star Disc. Uphill to the 16th of 350 foot par three to an elevated basket. Rare sight around here in Flagstaff. I don't think you need to add any elevation to the baskets when you're playing at seven to 9,000 feet. Oh, Kayla Visca, tree, tree, fairway, long approach. Can Joe take advantage? Ah, he cannot. Also playing Plinko in the fairway. Oh. Feldberg is airborne. Oh. No one able to find the line so far. Josh Anton, Dora Jar to gain a stroke on the card. There you go. A little 50 50 grind off the line. Wow. Inside circle one for Josh <laughs> Anton. Oh, this is so much fun to watch. It absolutely is. There is nothing boring about the way these guys are playing right now. Everybody's really trying to make a charge here. Felberg kind of out of airspace there to make that work. Wisely takes his par. Joe Revere, come on now. Run that in, Joe. That putt was so high in the air. That was up 20 feet above the ground before it went back down the elevator shaft and into the bottom of the basket. Insane, and what a moment for Joe Revere. Wow, talk about momentum. That's one of those moments right there. Joe Revere might be looking back at at the end of this tournament thinking that putt I made on 16. Got the mow back on my side when everybody else was having a hard time getting anywhere near the basket. Those little moments, man, they sure do pay off big when you least, you know, when you look back at your tournament as a whole. That's definitely going to be one that Joe's going to remember. And Kayla Visca, like a boxer who just took a stunning punch, has to step now to the 17th, a very long par three at 390 feet. This is a tricky birdie to get. Another one of those holes out here that finishes to the right, tucked in behind these trees. Obviously, you don't want to overturn this and burn it into the ground. So touchy. This one underturned from Joe Revere. Yeah, that's going to unravel a bit early, but should leave him a pretty open and unobstructed putt. Be lengthy, but it'll be a look. Anton trying to get that hyzer to flip and it just doesn't get to the center. First available on the left side and a long way to go to make par. LaVisca, dare I say, an opportunity here. This is the treaty. Definitely got to get past and this should shape up all right. Oh yeah, very nice there for Kayla LaVisca. Right around circle's edge, should be wide open. Find a way to take advantage of the opportunity. A Felberg trying to hold the line. This one, no. Okay. Yeah. Not a bad kick though. Gets him back towards the center of the fairway. Josh Anton now long carry to get up and down for three. That was early and overturned. Blocked out even for par. Felberg trying to go up and over. That was well judged. Yeah, it does well to get him a nice little tap in putt for par. Anton for his par. Cheeky bid, but coming up empty. Bogey here at 17th for Anton. Uh, as we expected, a long putt there for Joe. Now a big moment, Kayla Visca to knot things back up, 36 apiece. Mr. Smooth. 
answers the call. Responds with a right hook of his own, and no once doubt. again, we're tied at the top. Got all kinds of other sporting references going on, boxing, <laughs> skateboarding. What else can we toss in before <laughs> hold 18? <laughs> if you say something from pickleball, I'm leaving. I have, I've never even tried it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like fun, though. Well, follow. we open each nine here at Thorpe Park with a challenge. We close here at the 18th with one of the easiest holes on the course, just 500 feet for this par four. Definitely a fair distance. Obviously, you can see all the trees between the basket or the tee pad and the basket. But, you know, at 500 feet, if you catch something halfway, you know, 250 foot approach shot should be able to make something work. Something like that. All right, you're halfway down. You're going to have a pretty nice fairway out to the left side for Calavisca. Another thing is if these guys can kick clean, they should have a look for Eagle, but unfortunately, Joe Revere bops a tree and heads towards the gallery. Feldberg. You know, he'd love to finish with an Eagle here. Gives this a full send, but unfortunately, so many trees on the way to the basket, catches one, goes left. Final drive of the day for Josh Anton. Once again, unable to get clean off the tee, struggling. Big flexing forehand from Josh. That's one heck of a shot there from Josh Anton. Gives him a look for birdie here on 18. We get to see a little creativity here at the last. Exactly what I expected to see out of Kale LaVisca there. Had plenty of space up the left side. Beautiful little putter mid-range play. Tap in to close out his round. Felberg, no. Dang it. I'm with you, brother. <laughs> now Joe Revere way out there to players right. Lovely, lovely battle we witnessed today between Kale LaVisca and Joe Revere. Back and forth, as you say, like two heavyweights. The two strongest players by the numbers in the tournament. Going back and forth. Starting to stretch out that lead. Just a little bit more than what they had coming into this round. Yeah. Oh Just boy. not Josh Anton's day today, was it? No, it wasn't. Now Joe and Kale to gap the field a little bit more. Solid shooting there for Joe Revere, 10 under par on the round. I believe that's gonna be a hot round out here at Thorpe. And what a time to do it. Official moving day here at the Masters Pro Worlds. Unbelievable battle that we've been witnessing between all of these competitors, but really these two starting to make this a two-man battle right now. And as Kale LaVisca Finishes off with a birdie, a shout out to Batman, Dutch Napier, the lone eagle of the day at the 18th. That's so cool. Love it, Dutch. Kayla Biscay and Joe Revere, as I said, putting a little bit of space between them and the rest of the field here in round number four. You see Dave Feldberg still in third and Pete Uliberry making his way to the lead card for the semifinal round, which will be coming up soon right here with the PDGA on YouTube. For Follow Brathwaite, I'm Grant Zellner. Thanks for watching.